So at this point, we're going to now introduce the other elements that will be inside of our container div and underneath our header div. As we saw last time, we had our header and it was able to, as you can see, give us a background color and we were able to give it a little bit of change as we went along um, with regards to not only its um, size but also its height. So it's all inside of the container. We wrote the end of our code there as well. So I'm going to hit return in my code view and as you will see, we can actually separate that a little bit more. We've got the space. I'm going to now introduce another div tag. And this div tag, we're going to give the ID name sidebar1. And we'll define a new CSS rule for sidebar1 as well. So sidebar1 ID inside of our external style sheet. That's fantastic. What we want to do with sidebar1 at this particular point in time is to say, well, first of all, you know, sure, we can give it a background color and we can, uh, you know, decide exactly what that color is going to be. We can change it later as well. So just roughly, I'm going to come in here and give it a background color. But what we're going to need to do is to go into the box area. Now, as we saw when we were looking at the finished example, we had two smaller sidebars and one larger area in the center. And the sidebar containers were smaller because we actually defined a width for them. Now let's think. Our container div is 960. So if I wanted about, you know, equal amounts on the left and the right hand side, as well as a larger area in the middle, well let's think. If I create that area in the middle to be 600, that would leave me 360 left over, which could then be split up into a nice 180 on one side, 180 on the other side. So we're going to come in here and we're going to say 180 for this particular area. Now when we do that, however, we're also going to have to say, well, sidebar one I want to be floating on the left hand side of this page. And that's exactly what it's going to do. It's going to push itself over to the left hand side, just as the other one will push itself to the right hand side. So we're going to click OK and we will then click OK for the insert div tag and lo and behold what we see is the sidebar underneath of our header and notice it's inside of the wrapper. If I come here and I click on this little line that we see right here in Dreamweaver that's actually my wrapper, my container div, right? Div container. Now we created that div with a white background. How come it's not showing up? You might imagine if sidebar one is indeed stretching it out. Well, it is indeed stretching it out. However, we won't see the background color until we have a floating element underneath all of the others. And we'll get to that in due time as we will see a little bit later. So I'm going to leave the text inside of this, but you know, I'm just going to clean things up a little bit more because we have some space and because it'll be easier for us to read the information. So you'll notice I'm just going to separate things like that. And at the very end of this div, hey, let's put in that comment just because it'll make things easier to understand. And I'll say end of sidebar one. And that's perfect. So we've got that information. While we're here, why don't we preview this in the browser after every major milestone. And you can see, hey, that's great. We've got our information in place and we're going to be able to move it around. Notice how it's all within the container. So as I move the browser window, the actual objects are moving inside with the container as well. So that's all good. We're ready to go for our next step, which will be to create the following divs so that they'll be next to sidebar number one.